It's looking at the time. Okay, I've got uh, got okay eight minutes. Right. So um, the option of enlightened wisdom, the Bama is boundless. Okay, we understand that because um, it's vast as a universe. Uh, time and space stretch on a length, but we pass through three periods in a flash. Um, it, it, time passes by in a flash for us, uh, especially for unenlightened beings, because we don't know what we're doing and the time to consume frivolously without knowing. So we must protect and preserve our resolve on a body path of enlightenment. So knowing this, then that's why we need to protect and preserve our resolve. So again, the time can be meaningfully spent, maintain faith and understanding as a start, a deep roots and firm spiritual aspiration. So the Buddha taught us to enlighten causes and conditions so that we know, um, know the how uh, we should be living. Maintain faith and understanding as a start and set the aspiration uh, in our hearts. The power of our vow lies with our religion and sincere practice. And obviously, um, that, these are the efforts we need to undertake because when you're diligent and sincere, that's when the time can be meaningfully spent and not being consumed frivolously. So people with sincere intentions seek the Buddha's sariras. Um, obviously, we spoke a lot about that in the sort of sariras yesterday. Um, and obviously, this is the, the um, aspiration they want to seek the Buddha's energy. So in the past, our ignorance, we may commit all kinds of wrongdoings. All of this dharma that was taught is inseparable from the then characteristics of world transcending and virtuous people. What do you mean by world transcending? That means secretly transcending all worldly matters. Um, and obviously then uh, we also uh, have the characteristics of virtues in our life. So one who practices the ten teaching will always be encountered in principles of virtuous dharma. So we'll come to that in the next slide. The ten teaching are two parts to that. One is on the cessation, which is undertake to refrain. Um, and then on the other side, it's uh, the practice of virtues. Then what is this 10 uh, practices, um, which are 10 wholesome deeds? So uh, obviously on one side is cessation, on the side is practice, right? So, um, so let's say for example, I under to refrain from killing, that's the practice of it is preserving life. Then undertake refrain from stealing, the other side is practicing generosity. I undertake to refrain from sexual misconduct. On the other side of the practice, practice moral ethics. I undertake to refrain from false speech or lying. On the other side, I practice speaking honestly. I undertake to refrain from um, slander speech or divisive speech. I undertake to, re, um, to practice speaking harmoniously, no gossiping. Undertake to refrain from harsh speech, speaking politely or gently. Um, undertake to refrain from flattery or either chatter, especially uh, speaking meaningfully. Undertake to refrain uh, from speaking greedily, which is about covetousness in your speech, uh, and practice contentment. Uh, and this about anger, this is not um, um, an from uh, until you refrain from malice, uh, practicing loving kindness, compassion. So this one is uh, under covetousness is, is about the mind, okay? It's not about the speech. So covetousness, then um, this malice, um, then until you refrain from holding wrong views or giving views. Um, here you're expecting the great, universal law of cause and effect and that is what the pattern the right feeling and the right views so there are three of the deeds um and um then uh, the four good deeds of the speech that's one two three four and then three of the mind one two three here yeah. right and contemplation uh people want to see what they want to see and that's how our senses works, right? Because 
um, how does how does this wanting to see arises? It arises from two things. It arises from the heart that that's a desire of what we want. So therefore, we when we go out to seek to want to see, or it could be very well be the thought that arises, and a thought arises from the ego or the emotion. If so, how can then one progress beyond the self-cherishing mirror? Right. So we look at our the mirror and we cherish our desire, we cherish our thoughts and our views. But you must reflect on your daily cultivation. You do so to assess your progress and to repent your thoughts of the day. So this is why when we sit down and do our own reflection of what we have done during the day or we get a start of the day that we do that um, so that we have the right mindset uh, to live through the day and the end of the day we can reflect on what we have done or during throughout the day you reflect what you have just said or what I have just done and that's when we then if I, uh, um, we repent whatever we have may have said wrongly and done wrongly so and not to indulge in your merits so sometimes, um, especially um, uh, uh, a lot of us, we have merits in our life. That's why we have this good life that we have. But when, but most of, or more often than not, we, we indulge in it. We indulge in it and therefore forgetting what we may have done um, because it's nice to wallow in, um, in all the um, good conditions that we may have. So the mirror reflection is therefore one of self-reflection or self-correction of the inner being and which is within our self in the internal cultivation uh, and not the bus in the glory of good deeds um, that sometimes without knowing we very attach. Actually, actually attachment, attaching to a spiritual practice, attaching to Dharma is also an attachment. So um, and obviously, you notice that on the compilation I shared with you, I'm referring to um, a lot of it is referring to, to your and you, etc. I'm, I'm, I'm not telling you what to do. These are all contemplation that comes to me, is telling me. So I, I don't want you to think that um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm perfect or you are not. So it's telling me how I, sh I should be correcting myself, which I'm done trying sharing with you. So on relationship, forgiving in a relationship, forgive all those who those and they may have heard or harm you knowingly, unknowingly, in thoughts, words, or deeds. You need the merits to have the opportunity to forgive. And uh, so therefore, if you can forgive, that is already meritorious. And there you trans convert the merits into virtues. Hence, do not waste the opportunity to forgive. You see, when, when merits come to you, and you're able to do that, but you consume that, you wallow and you consume that, you enjoy that, then the merits ends. But if we have those merits, we convert those merits into virtues, and it's what we should do, and that we spend those merits um, in virtues for the benefit of others. So forgiveness does not happen as time will heal. The karma can mature in your future life because you don't do it now. Uh, it will come someday. So let go and forgive. All right, thank you. Karen, thank you so much, uh, Virgin. Uh, marvelous session.